Bella. <laughs> Thomas Town. <laughs> Ballon Robe. <laughs> St. Joseph's. <laughs> and Dungarvan. Welcome Hollywood, Castle Knock, Nace, Claire Morris, and Killarney. All right, thank you, Jim. <laughs> Welcome to the stage, the chairperson of the board of the No Name Club, Carol Golding. Delighted to be able to welcome you all here tonight to our 34th annual No Name Club Awards. I'm particularly pleased to be joined once again by um, Eamon Doyle, one of our founders. Father Tom was here, and Eddie Kerr sends his apologies. Um, I'm delighted to welcome the Mayor of Kilkenny, Patrick O'Neill. <laughs> and Superintendent Paul Rick Dunn. <laughs> welcome adult leaders. And welcome supportive partners. I just want to mention that um, Dominica Healy and Anne Donahue are unable to join us tonight. It's the first time they will have missed a finals in maybe 25 years. So we send them our best. and we hope to see them soon. Now lads, I'm only getting going, I'm only warming up. It's a bit of hush, captive audience. I don't see you very often. I want to acknowledge and mention the No Name Club Youth Council. At long last, we have a forum of young people representing ideas and opinions and thoughts directly to the board on behalf of everybody. So, here comes the lecture. Are you ready? Pay attention. 
I might ask questions later. So, today we live in a competitive society that has big winners and big losers. Educators, motivation experts, life coaches, sports psychologists and other mentors. They all teach us how to approach success and how to be winners. But very few teach us a more, a more valuable lesson, how to cope with failure. Never underestimate the magical properties of failure. Because failure, it rewires the brain and it gets your creativity flowing. I'm talking to all of you, all of you who have ever been dumped, not got the job you wanted, received rejection letters, You're there, girls, are you? <laughs> or maybe, you know, not got the grade you wanted for your essay. We've all been there. <laughs> Thank you. You know the sting of losing or not getting something you really wanted. When that happens, you need to show what you're made of. Early this morning, all over the country, and not too far from us here in the hotel, lots of people took to, took to the roads with the Into the Light walk. Families are dealing with lost loved ones who felt it was too much for them to go on. So things in life will go wrong. Things will get broken, and to, to steal a line from Garth Brooks, some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. It might seem like the end of the world not to get your heart's desire, but it will bring you on a different journey. And remember, at any given time in life, you're always exactly where you are supposed to be. That's your place. So, what I'm talking about is resilience. Bounce back ability. It's a skill for you to develop and cherish for life. You'll be a strong, solid person because of it. Three tips I'm offering you for free. Pay attention. Number one. Can you hear me, Kalani? Yeah? Right. Number one, don't give away your power. If other people are in control of your actions, they define your success and your self-worth. Know and keep track of your goals and work towards them. Number two. Don't make the same mistakes over and over. Accept responsibility and change your behavior. If you keep doing what you're doing, you'll keep getting what you're getting. Don't fear time alone. No matter where you go in the world, the first person you will meet at your destination, even you, is yourself. Learn to like who you are and what you are. No Name Club is always here for you. The other hosts and hostesses in your club, your leaders, our office, the board. There's always someone for you to reach out to if you need it. Don't be afraid to introduce yourself to me if you catch me on the way around tonight and let me know what's on your mind. So finally, thank you Events Committee for all your work. Thanks to everybody involved today. Judges, Maria, Brown and Amy. The eight finalists that you are about to meet are representative 
of all of our No Name Club hosts and hostesses, any one of you could have been up here. Have a lovely night, and I know it will be a memory for you to treasure for a long time to come. Now, without further ado, let's get the proceedings started. Please welcome to the stage our MC for the night, Miss Maria, Maria Walsh. Hello again. Hello. How are you doing? Hi. Ladies, round of applause for the most amazing host and hostess of the year, Amy and Brogan. They did a fantastic job, thank you. Welcome. Uh, now, I just need to clarify, is the wolf whistle for them or for me? Because it's pretty important for my ego for the rest of the night. Thank you to the one in the back. Shame on the rest of you over here for not even saying anything. Um, welcome, uh, my name is Marie Walsh. It is a great honor to be back here again. I do want to kick off with a few words by saying, can we give a round of applause for three great men, uh, Father Tom Murphy, Eddie Doyle, and Eddie Kerr, Eamon Doyle, ah! for, in, uh, I was joking with our young people earlier uh, in a question I wasn't asked uh, when I went for the hostess of the year in 2004. What year did No Name Club start? Now, the three boys would like me to say 2008 to make them seem a little bit younger, but it was 1978, and that date is forever ingrained in my brain. Shame on whoever said a completely wrong mathematical equation over here. Round of applause for the chap over here who was shouting very, very confidently. But these three men came up with an idea. They created a society. And many, many years later, uh, thousands of young people have come together um, across the country, um, celebrating all things young people. And it's such a great, great honor to be back on the stage uh, for the second year in a row. And I uh, want to just thank the events committee, the board of directors, and indeed our founders for allowing me back on the stage today. So thank you very, very much. Now, with these three founders, indeed the boards, comes the adult leaders. We can't really go too far as young folk, and I'm going to align myself as a young person for the rest of the night, um, if we don't have great support within our community and as community leaders, I think it is such a credit at the top end of tonight, before we really kick off and party, to give a huge boule bus to our adult leaders who allow us to celebrate great things about being young people. Now it's the adult leader's turn. Us young people keep them on their toes. We never talk back. We're always right. We're always on time. And we're always uh, dedicated to all things no name, aims and objectives in making our society a better place. So adults, may we give our young people a big round of applause for keeping us on our toes. Now, 2004, I, I briefly mentioned um, a few minutes ago, 2004, uh, I be, was very, very honored in Cork to be crowned the hostess of the year. Um, it was a huge honor for my club. Our club was very young at the time. Um, it was a Hedford club, Hedford Calistran, and it was just, Respect, thank you. Um, and it was such a great honor, and not just for me or my family, but indeed the young people within the community. Um, and it was great to see so many clubs prosper since. Um, it seems like a very long time ago. I was on the stages with Ray Darcy in Cork. Um, and it's just remarkable how No Name Club organization has gone from strength to strength 
um, over the number of years. So um, I know I said it earlier, but thanks for having me back and making me feel extremely old when I say 2004 Hostess of the Year. Now, last year, two young people were crowned host and hostess 2016. Brogan and Amy, I think they did an absolute amazing job. Um, I heard nothing but great stories throughout the, the, the year and indeed the last 24 hours when adult leaders were coming up and sharing stories from um, the, great, the great work that they've done all year. Uh, so with that, I want to give them a huge credit because I think as young people, they certainly did No Name Club and us very, very proud. Brogan is dying to stand up and everybody applaud him. So Brogan, will you stand up? Amy too, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'm delighted he has grown in maturity since we last interviewed him on the stage. Thank you very much, you too. Um, tonight is about a couple of things. Uh, we know there's gonna be a big disco later on. Uh, We know the green and red of Mayo is going to be played, which is the best song ever. Thanks. We know Mayo is going to win the All-Ireland in September. I actually am so proud that worked out because it usually does it. So thank you very much. Mayo for Sam, Mayo for Sam. Now, as I said, it is, about, uh, it is about having fun. It's also about highlighting uh, the great work you do in your, thank you, thank you. It's about uh, highlighting the great work that you do in your communities and deed clubs throughout the country. Settle down, settle down. Thank you. Nicely well rehearsed, thank you very much. Um, but tonight we are honoring eight great people. Uh, four hostesses, four hosts from right across the country. Um, they're a tad bit nervous, ladies and gentlemen. We ran through earlier on, um, and it, from, from a little bit of an older member in society, aka myself, to adult leaders, uh, your eight young people spoke about the clubs phenomenally well with great passion. Um, we didn't even delve into half the stuff that we, I, I probably would have hoped to talking about their life because they were just so passionate about showcasing their club in the best possible light. Um, they are backstage, I know they can hear us. Can, can we give them a little bit of love and a round of applause too? Yeah. Now, but before I do introduce them, she was just on stage. She uh, shamefully, can't hear anything, shamefully told me her birthday was uh, just before Christmas. I won't give um, the exact date. She was 60. She is the director, uh, chairperson of our board. Uh, can we give a little bit of a happy birthday sing song to Carol Gilden, please? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Stand up, Carol. Happy birthday. Happy birthday On the chair. Happy birthday. Don't come up on stage. Okay, come on up. This is where I get fired for the rest of my job. Ladies and gentlemen, doesn't she look great for 60? Our Carol. Now, it was fantastic to be your host, uh, your MC, for two years. And just to confirm, I probably won't be back next year, but it was great for the crack. Um, now, a few rules before I introduce. And I please, please, please ask only once. While our eight finalists are on the stage and they're giving it absolute socks about how great they are, how great their clubs are, and really providing um, just an abundance of appreciation for where they're from, I would ask all people in the room, and that's to you adult leaders, um, to please just be as silent as possible um, we will keep it as short uh, and as quick and as fun as we can, um, but it is quite nerve-wracking, in particular when they're doing their party pieces, because we have some poems, we have some songs, but all carry unique messages. So that uh, is my one and only, only ask, if you don't mind, please and thank you. And with that, let's make some noise. 
Let's bring on our young people representing. Now, I have no legit prizes to give for noise, but no namers don't need prizes because we make noise wherever we go. Please give a huge boule bus representing Kilbride. Eva McLaughlin! And as she's making her way through the stages, Mount Bellew folks, we have Rory Fallon join us next. Brogan. Coming all the way from Conte Veo, representing Lewisburg. Please give a warm welcome to Rachel O'Malley. Coming from Tungarvin, please welcome own Bohan! What a round of applause! Coming from Kilkenny, please welcome Georgina Lahi! Please welcome Camille Badaik. Coming from Killarney, please give a big boule bus to Mary O'Sullivan. Last, but by no means least, coming from Finglas, please welcome Jonathan Dunn. Brogan, you are such a gent. Who knew? Don't they look fantastic? Now, to make sure we're all camera ready, we're gonna ask our young people to sit down. And our first interview will be taking place. Aoife McLaughlin, I would be honored if you could join me on the stage here. There you go, my love. Now, it's not always easiest being the first up, but uh, well, I'm very excited to hear your party piece later on. But first, tell us, representing Kilbride, we do have a little happy birthday. We may yes. not go as big as our Carol, but we will do a big shout out. Um, we would like to say a big happy 18th birthday to Tara Cuttle from Kilbride No Name Club today. <laughs> Delighted, Tara, you can join us. Braha Lona Witch, if, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, now, tell us about yourself. You told me a very, very amazing story early on, that over the years, uh, since being a no name, um, you've learned quite a bit in confidence, but you were never, you never started off like that. <laughs> no, um, when I was younger, I was a very confident little young girl, and one of my favorite TV shows was Barney. Uh, so I learned off the theme tune to Barney, but I didn't learn it off quite right because when I started to sing, I said, I love me instead of I love you. And mom and dad were like, Aoife, it's I love you, but I was having none of it. So <laughs> that was my Barney experience. And as I went through uh, primary school, I was quite confident and I was chatty. And, and then I went into secondary school and it was a big jump for me. It was a big transition. 
I felt like a small fish in a massive sea and I just, I sort of kept my head down and kept focused on my books until third year. Until TY then, when I started to branch out, I joined the No Name Club. Yeah, so tell us, so you've been, am I right in saying you've been two years in No Name? Yeah, this is my second year in No Name. Yeah. And I can imagine, like many of us in the room, confidence in secondary school, as you just said, gets a little bit shattered. You know, yeah. you, are that, yeah. you are that small first year with a big backpack and trying to yeah. find your way <laughs> around all the jumpers and, and make sure you're getting to class on time. Yeah. Um, but how has No Name helped you? Um, it has helped me definitely in confidence and self-esteem. I remember when I went into first year, one of my first memories was doing the musicals. And our first musical was Mary Poppins. And I was a little monkey side stage. I was just waving out and singing the songs. And I was just very shy. And I looked at the leads and I was here, wow, like, will I ever get to do something like that? Because music is one of great passions of mine. And I just, such awe on my face, looking at the girls. They would have been in fifth year or sixth year, you know, going out doing their thing. And I was just, I was so admired, you know, I admired them so much. And I never thought that I'd have the confidence. And when I joined No Name Club and I did super talents and a lot of on stage experience, like here I am now. And then l just about a few months ago before Christmas, we did um, another ski musical, Beauty and the Beast. And I was very, very lucky and privileged to be one of the leads in that, which I never thought would happen. But Amazing. Yeah. It, is, it is phenomenal when you reminisce and you share tonight, um, because that was a goal of yours in first year. Yes. And now a few years on, you've reached the goal and many yeah. more to come. But uh, we were talking earlier because I actually visited your school as Rose. Yes, you did. And I talk about this school quite often. So for any teachers we might have in the house or um, any very close relationships as adult leaders, I'm sure we all have with our schools. But you had done an amazing International Women's Day project. Yes, um, I, was, I happened to be on the student council that year and we decided we'd organize an event as an all-girls school to um, make International Women's Day very important in our school and highlight it. So when we found out, we were very privileged to have Maria Walsh as a speaker, and we I were very well excited. I paid her well to say that, ladies and gentlemen. And we were very excited. We decided we'd put a bit of a twist on it, because as women, we like to be different. And so we decided we'd wear odd socks with their uniforms and all different types of lipstick. And Maria just really picked up on it, and she thought it was a lovely. A lovely it was. Touch. It was phenomenal. It was colorful. It was different. And it was striking. And when you asked individuals why they chose the certain shoes and the lipstick, they all had individual stories to go with. So I think that was really kudos and, and, and a good learn for everybody in the room tonight. So thank you very much for sharing. Um, tonight you have a few people with you. I do. I have my mother and father and my little brother Brian, who just started first year this year. And I have my auntie Tina and Derek, and I have my little baby cousin Tig, which is just over all there. All the family is out. <laughs> May I say we have the youngest two members of No Name Club in the house tonight. <laughs> Love that. Delighted that they're here to join us. Um, now, we will get to talking about singing in just a few moments, but you also have a few other passions. You have um, acting as some, but football is another. Yes, I have football as well. Also with Kilbride, we have a football team, and um, we did very well last year. We won our senior league and county titles. So we were very lucky. Mm -hmm. And tell us, so, between football, singing, school, how do you actually fish No Name Club into your life? <laughs> well, I was just talking about No Name Club the other day, and you'd be, you'd be in the middle of your homework on a Tuesday evening, let's say, and I'd often get a text from Lydia, one of the other members of No Name Club, lives down the road, and she'd be like, Aoife, do you want to lift No Name Club tonight? And I'd be like, oh, okay, No Name Club. I'd throw the books away, and I'd say, right, No Name Club tonight. And it's just, it's something different. You know, it's not, you know, going out to train and or going out to sing and or it's just something you can relax when you're there and you're yourself when you're there. And as I was saying to Marie earlier, it's something that you can come back to. When I'm finished college or even when I'm working, I could pop into an O'Name Club meeting down the road whenever and I'd be accepted no problem as if I never left. And it's something maybe because you retire from sport and you might retire from music or your other talents. But you can never really retire from No Name Club, and you, you can always come back, and it's always something They do for. ask a few of us to leave. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't always get the message. But I do love that sentiment, you can never retire from No Name Club. I think that's a really, really special, special phrase for perhaps tonight. Um, now, I do want to just give a brief mention to Kilbride, because it is a very strong club. It's 13 years ago in. 13 years ago in. We have John, Stephen, and Divna here for 13 years now, and they're not leaving any time soon, I can tell you that. <laughs> and we have Natalie and Cathy there as well, our other two leaders. So a big shout out to all Kilbride. 
And I promised you uh, a little bit of a song when we first started chatting with Aoife. Um, you are a phenomenal singer. I'm very, very excited to showcase and, 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 and welcome the guests to here tonight. <laughs> you are going to be singing Ned of the Hill. Yeah. It's a Shano song. It's a Shano song, yeah. Um, Aoife, take it away. Thank you very much. I'll take this one. Silence the hour, oh, who is this minstrel on yonder lone tower, whose love is so tenderly touching with skill? Oh, who could it be but young and head of the hill? And he who sings, Lady Love, won't you come with me now? Oh, come on, come out with me under the bough. I'll pillow your head where the light fairy. With young Ned of the hill, young Ned of the hill has no castle, no hall, no bowman or spearman to come at his call, but one little archer of exquisite. Shaft on young and head of the hill, and it is hard to escape from this young lady's bar. For high is the castle and guarded the tower, but the heart leads the way when. The mind has no will, and Eileen is gone with young Ned of the hill, and he who sings, Lady Love, won't you come with me now? Oh, come on, come out with me. Under the bough, I'll pillow your head where the light buries the red. If you will but wait with young and it off the hill, if you will but wait with the I promise you a singing sensation, Eva McLaughlin. She is going to be hitting our Broadways and many stages for years to come. Thank you very, very much. Next up on the chopping block uh, is a gentleman from not that far away from me. Please welcome Rory Fallon, coming from Mount Bellew. Rory, you never told me you were going to be looking so dapper. Loving the bow tie. Yeah, thanks very much, Maria. Yeah, so it's called the wood bow. So my neighbour across the road, Paul Sweeney, you might actually know him. He was in No Name Club himself. Um, he's actually won um, various awards around the place for making these um, bow ties. And he's, um, he's a carpentry student in GMIT Letterfac. And he's very successful. He's been two, year, two or three years on the go now. And he does a lot of, um, goes to a lot of craft fairs around the place. And he, he's very successful with um, the bow ties. Now, yeah. because you went on an absolute sales mission there, I'm going to allow, where do we find him? 
Does he have a website? Um, yeah, he, he does. What's yeah. his name again? Um, Wood Balls by Paul. That's there we the go, ladies and gentlemen. Company, yeah. Expecting all uh, hosts next year to be decked out in this. You're very dapper. Yeah, now, you. back to you. Um, I know we had talked about earlier, uh, darkness into light, as Carol had said earlier, was on throughout the country and indeed throughout the world. Um, I tried to get these lazy latchkos here behind me to get up at uh, 3.30 to walk with me. Unfortunately, it's something really big and important today, so they thought sleep was really important. But my belly went out. Yep, that's right. At 4.15 a.m., they left the walk from Ballygar, and a great, fantastic group of people from Mount Bellew. I'm very proud of them now. And they went out at 4.15 a.m., and they, they did the Darkness Into Light walk, raising vital funds for Pieta House, a great charity. And um, I'm very proud of them now. And, uh, you know, it was a shame I, I couldn't go, but, like, you know, um, it's great that they did. Someone had to do a bit of work today. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> Now you're in fifth year, Kogorchkis to all the Mount Bellew folk to do that. You're in fifth year, second year, no name. But it's not new to you, or new to the family, I should say. No, it's not that new to me at all, because um, I've known about no name clubs since I was very young, probably six or seven years old. Uh, my mom used to um, be an adult member in the club, and she used to organize a lot of the cabarets. Um, so I actually remember being at a few cabarets in um, University of Limerick, the concert hall. Um, so she was very involved in No Name Club, all right. Um, and then, of course, I, all, I see all the work that um, Mount Bailey No Name Club did in the community. Because um, we were saying they're 23 years up yes. and running uh, this year, correct? That's right, 23 years what this a, year. What a yeah. great heritage that they have. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it's fantastic. But it, it, from, the, from your brothers and sisters, because you were saying they were in it, was the expectations different for what they had told you when, that you found? Um, no, I didn't find them that different, no, well, um, because I think um, it, it, we need um, go a good no-name club in communities um, at the moment because I think um, it, it's a, it, more, more than ever we needed a place to go socialise for the young people to go socialise and I think the no-name club is a great asset to the, to the community in Mount Bellew yeah. because we meet every Sunday night and we go down and, and we might get a takeaway from the local um, Roma t takeaway in the shop, uh, I mean, in Mount Bellew, so... And we'll, we'll have a good time and we'll <laughs> chat yeah. and everything. Yeah, and so. there's so much, uh, uh, an amazing what a conversation can lead to and the conversations that, that have, that, that help plant seeds for young people. Yeah. But over the last two years that you've been in it, what has been the highlight? If you could pick just yeah. one. Um, yeah, it's very hard now to pick one, but um, I suppose last year support, supporting them, Shane Coleman in the U National Youth Awards, um, it, uh, it was my first time in Lyrath, so um, it was a great, like, it was, I've never seen anything like it before. The amount of people, a thousand people in the Lyrath Hotel and the, the disco, the, the, I've never seen a disco go on that long before at a No Name Club event. Not but, many uh, have, uh, yeah. not many have. <laughs> no, definitely not, but it was it definitely a great experience. And we'll have a great night tonight as well, I'm sure. Yes, yeah. and no doubt we will. Now, you're, uh, you, have a, you have a serious role in No Name in Mount Bellew. You're over recruiting. Yeah, that's right. Uh, do you find it hard to go into schools and recruit and share the message of No Name? Uh, it's not that hard, really, because um, there's about um, three schools in the area now. Um, there's Holy Rosary College, Mount Bellew, that's my one, and then there's another one in Ballygar, Colosh the Wira, and the Vocational School in Mount Bellew as well. So um, what we do for recruiting new members, um, a, a few of us now this year, we went around to the TY students and we did a PowerPoint presentation in the various schools and we basically went through um, what the benefits are being, uh, being in a no-name club are and all the various events we do in the no-name club and where we go around the country and the community involvement as well. So, um, When I hear sentences like that, I always feel no-name is in very safe hands. Isn't it right, folks? When presentations are being made and it's very easy when it's coming from a young person to a fellow young person. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, Thank thanks you. A minute, I think yeah. that's amazing. Now, yes. Now this dapper man is not just used to being on stages and making presentations about no name. You have a few accolades in your belt. A John Paul II award. Yeah, that's a right. gold award, may I ask? Yeah, that's right, Maria, yes. Yeah, so um, there's two aspects to the John Paul II award. There's the community and the parish aspect. And for the community aspect, I did a lot of fundraising, book of collections for the Irish Heart Foundation, the Irish Cancer Society, Autism Ireland, and, um, and the Special Olympics Ireland as well. So I did a lot of um, fundraising for that, and then for the parish aspect then, um, I did replace the kneelers in the church and put in new ones, and then I did a few readings of mass as well. 
So um, yeah, it was, it was a great experience now, the John Paul II, and um, I'm delighted to have it now. Yeah, yeah, it's a huge accolade, and not many young people um, go for it, not many young people know about it, so if anybody is interested in here, I hope you do give a good shout out to it, because it is a phenomenal thing to have on your resume as you're going forward. Um, you're a man of many talents. I want to talk about the Malt House players. Yes. When I seen this on his resume earlier, I was like, I, I just don't know what that means. So you need to fill me in on what and where and how the Malthouse players came about. Well, yeah, the, so the Malthouse players are currently, we're over 21 years old. We recently celebrated our 21st birthday. And I suppose Malthouse, the name Malthouse players came from um, the Malthouse, which is um, a local landmark in uh, Mount Bellew, um, very famous um, because it was there with the Bellew estate. And um, so that's, that's how they got the name anyways. And um, so I'm very involved in the Malthouse players. Um, I put on, I do the sound and light production each year for the Malthouse players for the last six or seven years at least now at this stage. And, and not only are you an actor, but you're also a script writer, correct? That's right, yeah, I've, uh, as of recently. Own it, Rory, <laughs> absolutely own that. Yeah. yeah, recently enough now, I wrote a script for the um, Comedy Novelty Act in the Super Talent in Ballon Robe. So it was basically about um, the Irish and the American contingent meeting in um, Donald Trump's White House in America, and they did a few exchanges and had a how, great time. How uh, topical right now. Yeah. Was it received well? Um, yeah, it was received very well. We had great ap appearances from Conor McGregor and Louis Walsh, and Donald himself was there, and Enda Kenny. Jesus, and, Donald yeah. flew in, did he? Fair yeah, he talk. was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As it, yeah. Um, and is it something that is hard to do, script writing for you? Um, not really, no. I, 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 it just took me f maybe in, uh, two or three hours just to come show up with off, the idea Rory, in the first place. Off. And uh, yeah, so I, I just put a few um, notes on my iPhone and I just into my notepad and then I put up on the computer and then printed off a few scripts and then, yeah. That, love, that's it. I love the talent is just oozing out. Now, tonight you are going to be performing something called Wake by Seamus O'Rourke. Now tell us a little bit about it because um, I'm excited for this one. Yeah, that's right. So Seamus O'Rourke, he's a famous um, actor and playwright from um, Carrigallon in County Leitrim. And this is one of his pieces I really love. It's a short monologue. It's like a fly in the wall commentary of a wake in rural Ireland. And there's a few laughs in it. So I hope everyone enjoys it here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, representing Mount Bellew, please give a huge round of applause for Rory Fallon. <laughs> The Wake by Seamus O'Rourke. Mrs. Hogan died, God bless her, at the age of 84. And the husband, Johnny, hung a black cloth on the handle of the front door and left it open so that those that knew her could come in and pay their respects. Now, there was a great crowd that had gathered at the house that evening to see was she sick or what age she was or did she die of a sudden? And was she sick, Johnny? And Johnny said, no, she wasn't sick. She was in great form that morning and she ate an egg for the breakfast, something she hadn't done in a long time. And what time did she die at, Johnny? Well, Johnny said that she must have died sometime after she ate the egg. Oh, that's the way it goes. And tell me, Johnny, what age was she? 84. Oh, that's a great age. Well, says Johnny, it's a great age to be living at, but not a great age to be dying at. <laughs> the whole women of the country brought sandwiches and tins of biscuits, and them that were close to God brought buns they had made the day before. They seem to have inside information. Some called in on their way from to bingo, and some called in on their way to mass, and some called in on their way home from the pub and stayed. Francie Bohan, who had been in the town all day drinking, called in on his way home from the pub, and he ate a plate full of cheese sandwiches. Now, you would swear this man hadn't eaten a bit for a week. Mrs. Frigget, who isn't Irish, Irish said how it was a great party and 
She lost the run of herself a bit, saying that she wouldn't be eating an egg again in a hurry. And she laughed like an idiot. The priest, who had been there all day, shook hands with Johnny and left. The senator then came in and he shook hands with everybody. He said he had to go because he had left the car running. Some said she had a good life. Some said she had a hard life. But most just said she had a long life. Johnny said he used to hear her singing when she'd be making the dinner. Some found it hard to express words of sympathy, and others were, were good at it, and they did a lot of hugging and whispering into Johnny's ear, trying to make him cry. Some said nothing at all. When the rosary was being said that evening, Johnny looked sad, but he, he, he didn't cry. And the ones that were crying, sure, wouldn't they be the ones that were crying anyways? Mrs. Hogan was 84. She died of a sudden. God bless her. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Rory. Uh, an absolute uh, privilege. And Mampa, you, you pr even when I was a hostess, you would produce talented script writers and comedians, Kira Kilroy being one of them, um, year after year. And I always absolutely hated seeing you in Super Talent because you'd say, there's my Bayou being all funny and stuff. Next up, this woman, uh, so gorgeous. Next up, uh, I feel like I should give a good, good uh, kick off to this one. Coming from all the way in Lewisburg, County Mayo, please welcome Rachel O'Malley. Now, absolutely no favoritism, but Mayo is the greatest county in the country. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, first year, no name, correct? Yeah. And you're in TY? Yeah. <laughs> and how has your first year been? Oh, it has been amazing. The amount of opportunities that the no name has provided to us, it's incredible, really. Um, we've done so much throughout the year, and we've even grown um, in self-confidence and self-reliance and I'd recommend anyone to get involved and it's such it was a year well spent yeah now we you first year no name but it's has, has your siblings been involved in it yeah yes. <laughs> all my siblings were involved my brother and my two sisters so I guess when I seen them involved in the no name and the amount of fun that they had I was like, I definitely have to get involved in it. And they really enjoyed um, their year. So of course I'd get involved. <laughs> and what have you learned um, about yourself perhaps, even from hearing their stories to, to your own first year? Yeah, so um, like everything we did, like starting off, we were kind of like, geez, do we organize all the events or is it the leaders? Oh yes, the accountability yeah. hits yeah. you in the face. You're like, jeez, is it all us that have to like organise the fundraisers? But once you get into it, like coming to the end of the year, we're we're organising everything. Like we um like we are we started like to org organise our own events, mm -hmm. and we didn't have to rely on um on our leaders as much. And I think that was a great way for us to have grown throughout the year. Yeah. Now, we were talking earlier about a, an amazing initiative called the Giving Tree. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that for anybody who, perhaps any no-namers who'd like to adopt this idea. So we've done the Giving Tree two years now in our club. Um, so we set a tree up in our church and we put paper leaves on the tree. So on the leaves we have non-perishable goods wrote and the people that come to Mass bring the leaf home with them and they bring it back the following Sunday with that good. Um, so it's just the basic needs and we put them into little hampers and we give them away to um, families in our area that was in need because as we all know Christmas is a hard time and especially some families it's very hard so we give these hampers to these anonymous families and even though we didn't know who we were giving the, the hampers to we just felt great after us, afterwards and um, 
it was such it was such a good feeling to know that they went to someone that yeah. needed them the most. And I guess from that, it's probably um, perhaps even quite a shock for the amount of families that do need some extra yeah. love around that Christmas. Yeah, the amount of hampers it really showed us, geez, we should be really doing more as a community to help our community. And that kind of drove us on to do more quizzes and bake sales to raise money. Brilliant. Yeah. Now, you had come up with an idea, or you have come up with an idea. Yeah. Um, something different to welcome new members into No Name Club. Yeah. So I was lucky because my brothers and sisters had um, taken part in No Name, but there was a good few people in my year, and they didn't know what the No Name was, or they didn't know what it meant. So I have an idea so that we could bring, do a TY workshop, because I think TYs are the most year that would take part. So if we brought the No Name into the school for just two hours every week for three weeks, and just give the people a taster of what the No Name really is, and do the No Name in the school, and after the three weeks, I am sure the numbers of people that would know what the No Name is would like to join it from then on. Great initiative, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> isn't it? Um, and I think it's something that our centres, indeed, something that our clubs will be going, going home with. Yeah. Something very practical, and you're right. T-wires, any T-wires in the room? <laughs> I'm not making assumptions, but supposedly you don't have a lot to do in the T-wire year. Is that true or false? <laughs> Of course it's false, you're always busy. But I think that's a great initiative. Yeah. Um, and it's, so. is it something that uh, Lewisburg Club may roll out to just trial and error and see if it rolls? Yeah, I think we're going to try it next year, so we'll see how that goes and you know, if it works. <laughs> now, we, we did talk about how you grew in confidence um, from No Name. Yeah. With that confidence, we like to spread our wings and take <laughs> off flight. Um, and you have a dream to travel the world. Yeah, I, in future years and years, I hope to travel the world because I think you can read in a geography book about different countries, but to go to the countries and see how they live, I think that's really how you learn. So I'd love to travel the world and see all the different cultures and even bring some ideas back to my small town in Lewisburg and just to spread those ideas further as well. Now, because a lot of people have this ridiculous um, idea that to hell or to Connacht or Mayo will never win Sam Maguire, which is pure <laughs> false. Uh, but you have a great grow. We're, we're sisters in the great grow for, for the county that we grew up in. Yeah, exactly. So Mayo's, Mayo is a great county. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, now, the passion is not just shared with you here on the stage, but it's also with your, your mum, Marion, who was here with us earlier. Yeah, she's uh, over there. And you... <laughs> uh, Mummy Marion had an amazing thing where um, Rachel skipped into her interview and you seen the Blessed Mary Virgin being prayed to uh, <laughs> that she would get through everything. And I thought it was an endearing Irish quality trait that only mothers possess. Uh, but we, we have briefly talked about your granny too. Yeah, yeah, my granny, she is 92. She couldn't come today. She's been in a wheelchair for the last eight years. Um, but she's a spectacular woman and she is my idol because her positivity is just, everyone she meets, she passes her positivity on. And I hope to do the same thing. As Brilliant. Well. Now with that, we have another song. Yes. One of my favorite <laughs> songs. <laughs> you and I by Ingrid Michaelson. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to let you take it away. Thanks Ladies and gentlemen, much. representing Lewisburg, please give a huge round of applause for Rachel O'Malley.
teach them how to dance. Let's get rich and give out. Everybody nice presents and teach them to dance. Let's get rich and build everybody nice presents and teach them how to dance. If you might be a bit confused and you might be a little bit bruised, but baby, how we feel like no one else. Now you might be a read those books and I will help you read those books but we will feel like no one else oh let's go rich and buy our parents homes in the south of france let's go rich and give everybody nice presents and teach them how to dance let's go rich and give a house everybody nice presents and everything else let's get rich give everybody love thank you thank you very very much rachel o'malley representing lewisburg well done now, coming all the way from Dungarvan, please welcome up Owen Bohan. Oh, yeah. You, you brought a few with you, Owen, did you? Just a couple. Just, Just a, a couple. couple. I am sure we are going to see an amazing amount of respect for the rest of the interviews. Loud folks called Dungarvan. Um, tell us about you. You're a pioneer, you're in TY. Yeah. And dare I say, this might be, this is your first year, no name. Yeah, it's mostly a TY based thing in Dungarvan. So there's only about five or six fifth years in there this year. And there's about 115 TYs, so. That's, yeah. that's a lot of TYs. We'll hear yeah. them one more. We'll hear from. Had you heard, I love how it just cut off quickly. Had you heard about No Name before you joined? Uh, yeah, it's like every year, like everybody does No Name in Dungarvan. Like, so you hear all the fellas doing it or all the girls doing it. So like once you go into TY, like you know you're gonna do No Name. Like, and then they come into school then at the start of the year in September and say, this is the closing date. You have to apply by this date. So then, yeah. So were you late for the closing date? Is that what you're trying to <laughs> indirectly tell us? No, they don't accept you after the closing date. It's nice, after, strict yeah. rules in Dungarvan. It yeah. is a big club, you do a lot of things. We'd mentioned earlier a nightmare realm. Yeah. Where you acted very manly. Not really, no. It was a bit scary there, yeah. It was a bit scary, yeah. Were you hiding behind the hostesses of the club or? Yeah, little name bit. it, name and shame. Go on, right out. A little bit, nah. <laughs> nah he asked me not to bring that up, but um, we go way back, so I thought I might do that for the crack. Um, outside of All No Name, you're also very heavily involved in skew musicals. Yeah, we uh, for TY every year, the Friary School do a school musical, and this year it was Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, mm -hmm. and we all held auditions, everybody auditioned. And I was lucky enough to get a big part in the Pharaoh, so I was very happy with that. And then afterwards, I kind of liked it, so I decided to give the drama school in Dungarvan a try, so. Great. So you're singing, acting, extraordinaire. Yeah, 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 I got a part in Sister Act, the musical then, as the priest, so I was happy with that. Just to repeat, if Father Tom Murphy is still in the room, he's gonna find you later on, uh, because you're the priest in Sister Act, just to confirm. Yeah, yeah that's my part, yeah. So if Father Tom has left and we have any other priests in the house, please go over and give him some guidance. Yeah, hopefully. He asked me for that big shout out. Um, and are you, are you training much for um, Sister Act now or is it something that you're gonna be doing in the, over the summer? Well, the play takes part in late June, so we're like head on like f three or four uh, rehearsals a week this mm -hmm. for different parts. So it's pretty strenuous. Yeah, pretty, pretty busy, yeah. Now, throughout the day, you had a lot of you had a lot of busy day. You had um, 
interviews and then we were chatting and then all the fanfare clubs were coming. Yeah. It was kind of daunting. It was fairly scary, yeah, especially coming up here like in front of 800 odd people. It's like, mm -hmm. very scary. <laughs> now I just asked for a little bit of silence because we are going to talk about something really particular here. Um, and, I, and I wanted to bring it up particularly with you because you know, we, we come on stage, people look at us on, you on stage and yeah. say, oh, that looks so easy, he looks so confident, but it's not always the case. I don't think I look that confident in you fairness. You look great. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's fairly hard, like, you know, all day that you're going to be up here, and if you don't really sleep the night before, like, yeah. getting five hours sleep the best, like, so it takes up most of your day thinking about it, like, so. But it's difficult to get that up into peers, but No Name has helped you immensely within that confidence. Yeah. Yeah. It's like helps you like meet new people, like you get more confident, like meet you, helps you get to know the other fellas in the schools in the town, like there's three or four schools around Ungarvan, like you know them better now after a no name because they're all blended into one group, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it gets rid of clicks as well, do you know yeah. No, I like that because I think we have perceptions of certain things and it's really important in a room full of young people that we call that out. Yeah. Um, not only are you singing sensation, acting sensation, a future priest for Sister Act, but you're also sports mad. Yeah, my main sport's rugby. That takes up a lot of time. Then there's taekwondo every Monday and Thursday. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it for this year, which no name and drama then. And I really want to talk about Super Schools 2016, because yeah. you traveled quite far. Yeah, most years they go to Finland or Belgium, but the year I was on, they stayed here in Ireland in the hotel in the town, so that was not a bit of a disappointment, I suppose. So you threw your name into a hat for Super Schools 2016 and they went to Dungarvan. Yeah. Where did they go the following year? Finland. Finland. So cultured are Super Schools, aren't they? But tell us a little bit about it, because it was a number of different sports that you had to perform in. Yeah, the first day was basketball, and then on the second day it was soccer and badminton, and then the third day was athletics and swimming, and then there was a cross country on the Thursday and a disco to finish it off. And we were lucky enough to win it, so I was happy with that. And you won it. Round yeah. of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Champion Super Skills 2016. Rugby is a big sport for you. Who's yeah. the idol? Paul O'Connell. Yeah. Why so? He's fairly tall, like, you know, six foot six. Yeah. <laughs> Not about his sporting achievements, just the height. Yeah, I'd pretty, pretty much love to be that tall. Like, you know. If I ever meet him, I will tell, you, uh, tell him that there's a man in Garvin looking for him. Yeah. Uh, much like our uh, other wonderful finalists, you are going to be singing for us. Yeah, an Elvis song, All Shook Up. Now, before I introduce, hang on a second, before I introduce, I do want to say, um, you sang in the regionals, what song? Uh, song of the King from the play Joseph and the Miz until I look at a dream coat. But you decided to go with All Shook Up because you wanted a challenge. Plus, John Donovan wanted me to sing something different for a change. So Never mind that. Rest. I think it's really important if you were going to showcase and push yourself outside the boundaries you do with a new song. Yeah. So that's probably his point of view. Yeah. So thank you very much for being so brave. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, huge round of applause. Owen's going to sing for us. Bless my soul, what's wrong with me? I'm shaking like a man on a fuzzy tree. My friends say I'm acting wild as a bug. I'm in love. Uh, I'm all shook up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My legs are shaky and my knees are weak. I can't seem to stand on my own two feet. Who do you think of when you have such luck? I'm in love. Uh, I'm all shook up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, please don't ask me what's on my mind. I'm a little mixed up, but I'm feeling fine. Finally, the girl that I love best. My heart beats so, and it scares me to death. She touched my hand. What a chill I got. Her lips are like a volcano that's hot. I'm proud to say yeah, she's my buttercup. I'm in love. Uh, I'm all shook up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
tongue gets tired when I try to speak My inside shake like a leaf on a tree When I'm near the girl that I love best My heart beats so and it scares me to death She touched my hand, what a chill I got My inside shake like a leaf on a tree I'm proud to say yeah, she's my buttercup I'm in love, uh, I'm all shook up uh -huh. Uh -huh. Shook up. Let's hear another round of applause. Owen Bohan representing Dungarvan. You know, you can predict the future that at about 4 a.m. in this very room, that song is going to be sung to a few girlings, no doubt. <laughs> Chloe. That came from the leader of Dungarvan Club, uh, hand-delivered in a message. Thank you very much, John. Coming up, we have, right down on our doorstep, representing Kilkenny, please welcome to the stage, Georgina Lahi. Now, Georgina, did I pronounce the surname correctly? Yeah, you did. <laughs> Phew, I was stressing, um, because you pronounce it a little bit different on this neck of the woods. Yeah, no worries. Some people pronounce it Lahi, some people pronounce it Lihi, but I go by Lahi. Lahi. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad I got one thing <laughs> right today. Um, much like our other finalists here in TY, and this is yeah. your first year no name. Yeah, I joined in September. It's my first year no name, and I'm really enjoying it so far. And tell us, how did you hear about No Name Club? Um, I first heard about it just by word of mouth. Everyone in school was talking about it in September and um, we had an open night in the New Park Hotel where we just went and saw what the whole thing was about. And at first I only knew of it because of Lyra and the whole youth, youth awards and the disco and everything. And then I learned that it's much more than that and it's about kind of getting to know people and the whole programme, you know, learning that you can't have fun without alcohol and drugs and everything and I got really interested in it and I think it's and great. And what's re really unique about your, um, and I just ask everybody, I know we're a little bit hungry and tired and we're very excited and all those great things, but if we could just be quiet when our finals are on stage, I'd be most appreciative, thank you. Um, because the next bit is, you were the only one in your close group of friends that joined No Name. Yeah, I was. There's no one in my class um, in previous years that had actually got into No Name. There's girls in my year, but I don't actually know them that well. But No Name allowed me to get to know them really well. And I'm so glad I did. I'd never have the confidence to do this without the support of my friends. So it's Brilliant, great. because I think when we step outside our, uh, our comfort zones, yeah. we learn a lot of new things about yeah. it. And has No Name challenged you in that way? Um, yeah, it definitely has. I wouldn't have had the confidence to do this before, but No Name really does push you outside of your comfort zone. and gets you involved in different things, so I think it's great. There's a lot of teamwork and leadership involved in it, so I think it's really good. Well, clearly you come from a very strong livelihood and line of women, and I believe there's a granny here, is there? Yeah, my granny Rita is in the audience, and my Where auntie Where is Mal. Rita? Uh, just down there. <laughs> Hello. Granny Rita, how are you? <laughs> I have a great craw for when grandmothers support their granddaughters, so can we give a round of applause for Rita? for support. And uh, uh, who else do you have with this? Because you have a few others. Um, yeah, it's just my granny Rita and my auntie Mall. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> coming, coming all the way yeah. from Kilkenny. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I gave a big hoopla and then I realized, hang on, they're only skips and throws. Yeah. Um, how uh, much like your family support you, they're all very excited uh, that yes. you're here. How have you found, and I just asked Noan, how have you found the whole process of it? Um, I think it's been a really, really good experience. I've never done anything like this before, and it's just, it's been so amazing. Uh, it's been all go since yesterday and meeting the other finalists, but there's such a great bunch of people, and it's just really good. I was just saying earlier on that I've never actually done anything like interviews or anything like that before. Um, so it was just a great experience, and just want to have on your bed, you know. Yeah, it's because great. it's not very easy when you have to sit and kind of no. sell yourself. Yeah. Because you work part time, but you never had to interview for it. So this is essentially yeah. building for the career. Yeah, exactly. I think it's a great experience. It's just something, you know, 
it's so nice it's like great to have that experience and just to have done something like this before it's, it's great um, you're very insp inspirational <laughs> but you pull inspiration from many people we chat earlier about uh, a wonderful well-known man called Niall Tuhi. Yes, yeah. So when it was our the last night of No Name where we had the chance to put our name forward for the Youth Awards, we also had a guest speaker and his name was Niall Tuhi. Um, for those of you who don't know, he's just an athlete and he's also a doctor. And he came into our club just to talk about mental health and fitness and keeping well. And he was basically saying, you know, you're going to regret things if you don't if you don't try them, you know, you're only going to regret it. You know, you're not going to say, oh, I'm so glad I didn't do it, because you learn from things like that. And he was just talking about fueling your body with whole foods, and that's how he got to where he is today. And he's very, he's very successful, and I thought it was great. So when he was finished his talk, you know, on Spurman, I was like, I'm just going to go for it and see how it goes. So I went up to Shane and I said, look, I'm going to go for the Youth Awards, and I'm so glad I did, because I never thought I'd get this far. Mm -hmm and he actually contacted me yesterday. Niall did, right? Yes, yeah. Um, my poem is The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost, and he just contacted me yesterday, which is very lovely, and he said, you really did take the road that's not taken, because not many people get to come up here and experience all this, which is, and it's really great. So what a remarkable lovely. story that I think deserves a very warm friend. Now, you did just showcase you're going to be saying a poem for us, yeah. and I'm going to ask you to say that in a few minutes, but tell me about the Watergate Theatre, because you're also an ambassador for them. Yeah, um, so I'm a TY ambassador for the Watergate Theatre, and basically what they do is they send out loads of brochures and posters for upcoming plays that they have, and you go around the area, so my school is in Lockboy, so I go around the Lockboy area and bring them into hairdressers and shops like Super Value and things like that, and just stick them up on the windows to help promote the Watergate yeah. and the plays that they do. And in return, throughout the year, they send you tickets to go see their plays, which is really good. It's a really good way to get involved in theatre, you know, to do and that the and exchange of them. Kilkenny. Yeah, because I've never done anything got to do with theatre before, so it's a whole other side of things that I got to get involved in TY, which is really great. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, which segs me way, a segue into the your party piece. Yes. You are performing um, the road less tra uh, Robert Frost road less travelled, yes. um, or the road not taken is, yeah. is correct, probably correct title, mm -hmm. um, which is a lovely mix of inspirational words and culture. Yeah. So I will ask you to take it away, ladies okay, and gentlemen, representing you. Kilkenny. Please give a huge round of applause for Georgina Lahi. travel both and be one traveller long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where bent beneath the undergrowth then took the other just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear though as for that passing there they had worn them really about the same and both that morning equally lay no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, and doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be the telling the story with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two rows diverged in yellow wood, and I, I took the one less travelled by. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Georgina Lai, representing Kilkenny. Now, our next up, please welcome Camille Bydak, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your surname correctly. Very nicely done. I think he deserves another one of them. Let's go again. What I didn't say is he is from Slou South Sligo. Um, and you, you weren't born in Ireland, you were born in Poland. Tell yes. us about how living in Ireland has been. Um, well, I moved to Ireland in 2007, so I was seven years old. And I'm 17 now, or 16 now, but I'll be 17 this year. And uh, I've lived in L Ireland longer than I have in Poland now. So it's, I got used to the ways of, of the Irish and, you know. Uh, and Our sense of humor. Yeah, it's, it's great and everything. So, and 
they're lovely people as well, so I think yeah. it's great, yeah. And speaking of lovely people, I know your dad and your sister are here, and I yeah. do want to give them a nice little shout out. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, tell us about your experience with No Name. You're in TY, yeah. and this is your first year No Name. Yeah, this, I joined No Name Club in uh, September this year, and or last year, and um, it's given me great opportunities, and um, even to like be here and to get all this way up here, and gives you confidence as well, and um, because to stand up on a stage, it's not that easy, and to talk out to the whole public, or, over 800 people or whatever, and it's, it's great, it's amazing. And when you, much like everybody in the room tonight, um, when you did join, um, did it meet all the expectations you had or did it exceed it? Yes, I, I think it did meet the expectations. It's pretty much what I expected it to be. It was, it's an alternative to the pub, you know, it's no drink, anti-drink, anti-drug, so it really helps out and gets people together and it's pretty much what I expected. And um, is it daunting? And I would just ask everybody just to be a little bit quiet, please. Thank you very much, and sorry for keep asking. Um, is it daunting when you do, when adult leaders just go, here you go, there's a club, off you run it? Uh, no, I think, it's, I think it's nice that it's run by the people, by the young people, and that we get to do what we want and all the opportunities we get from it, and obviously supervised by the leaders, and it's all great, yeah. And what type of events have you guys done in South Sligo? Uh, we've done many events. We've done. Um, we meet up every two weeks, and there's something new every week. So we do something like dancing and some uh, defense, right? Self defense. defense. Uh, we're doing bingo, bingo with people with special needs from different houses and all that. So it's. Yeah. Um, and much like um, Rory, right? You're not new to all these awards either. So you've got you're you're going for a Goshka and also a John Paul II, correct? Yeah, both. Of them. And what are the type of things that you're doing? Um, for Goshka, you need three, uh, like, you need a community involvement, personal skill, and uh, recreation. So for recreation, I'm doing football with the, with the local club, and then um, my personal skill is playing the guitar. And um, any yeah. good? Uh, I'm all right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't play in football. Dad, is he any good? Ah, uh, he <laughs> wouldn't be good. <laughs> and then the community involvement is uh, no name club. No Same name with the. Then um, John Paul II Awards is the parish and community, so it's no name club for the community and uh, the choir for the, for the parish. Yeah. Now, of all our finalists that we chatted to, um, you were so community active. Like, you were very, very much immersed in, in your community through, through many of the accolades you just spoke of. Um, is there, because we were talking earlier about the census and how um, Polish is the second largest language spoken outside of English here in Ireland. Um, is it hard to keep connecting with your Polish community? Because obviously you want to celebrate your own culture too, as well as immersing yourself in the Irish. Do you yeah. see many differences? Um, there is a few differences, obviously. And like, for example, the, the music, the, the dancing, the, the food, or all these differences. But I think um, there's quite a few Polish people in, uh, in Ireland. And I think we get along to get well together yeah. with the Irish. Like, what do we not do well? Um, I, I think you said something about our music earlier on, was it? I think it was or the food. food. I just prefer the, the Polish food to the, rather to the Irish food. That's all right. The Lyrath Hotel <laughs> won't serve you bad oh, food yeah, the tonight. The Lyrath Hotel food is lovely. Yeah, yeah. Um, very inspirational. You mentor first years. How is that process? You're like you're like this whirlwind uh, poster child for South Sligo. <laughs> is it difficult to talk to younger people? No, I, I find it easy talking with young people, especially because they're. I was like them back then in first year, and it was very hard. So uh, I, f I understand what they're feeling, and um, and I and they're they're perfectly fine. Like I, when I speak to them, they say they're all right and they're doing well. So yeah. yeah. But it's equally it's great to know that you um, they have a shoulder if you do need it. Yes. Now, I want to give you um, your many few party pieces I get excited about. All eight are producing something really significant and special, but you are doing something even more special. You're providing the audience tonight over um, probably, we'll say, a thousand people um, with an inspirational message. Yeah, speech. Do you want to say a little bit about it, or will I just introduce you? I think you should just introduce me. Ladies and gentlemen, as you get set up, please give a huge round of applause representing South Sligo. Camille Badaik.
Um, so today I want to speak about um, human potential and basically uh, how far you can go with yourself and how hard you can push yourself. So ask yourself this question, where is your finish line? What is your maximum effort? Think about that question. What is your indication that you've hit your peak? Right, people point at fatigue, being tired. Maybe they're happy with the result. But it still leaves the question unanswered. What is your limit? It's not like an automatic mechanism that shuts us down when we've given everything we can and we've done all we can do. It's not like a glass of water that reaches the top and overflows. For human potential, think bigger. Think of an ocean. How many buckets of water would you need to pour into the ocean before it could not hold any more liquid? Some of you love sleep more than you love success. If you wanna if you want to be successful, as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. He who says he can, and he who says he can't, are both usually right. If you got a dream, you got to protect it. Thank you. Thank you very much. What a remarkable message. Um, thank you very, very much, Camille, representing South Sligo. Next up, we have coming from Killarney. Where are you, Killarney, in the room? Please welcome Mary O'Sullivan. Mary, you're trying to take my, uh, someone has an amazing voice box. Uh, Mary, do you own them? Yeah, I own all of them, yeah. <laughs> we'll give them one more opportunity to make big noise. Representing Killarney. Now, Mary, thanks very much for joining us on stage. Um, big year for you in school. Are we allowed to talk about it? Yeah, we are. Yeah. This little thing called the Leave Insert. Uh, yes, I'm in leading cert in uh, Clot to Government in Ballavorney in County Car. And um, are you all set for it? How are you feeling um, good about it? I'm feeling pretty confident with it now, yeah. I've done all my practical work and all the orals out the way, yeah. Mm -hmm. And from, an, from a no-name perspective, this is your second year no-name. Um, is it living up to everything that you could have ever dreamed of and asked for? Oh, definitely. I wasn't expecting like all the things we've done so far. It's just beyond like I've ever imagined before I joined the club and all the wonderful people I've met down there, they're brilliant. And you add such colour to it because not only are you doing your leave insert, we're, we're going to go through a number of different things, um, but word on the street is that Bertie told me you speak six languages. Is this true or false? This is true. Um, I love learning new languages. Um, one, of, one of the questions I was asked at the Munster, uh, for the Munster process was, how do you speak Russian? It's kind of a language that wouldn't be taught in school and it's kind of a language people wouldn't know, but um, I take in Chernobyl children every year from Belarus, and they come to Ireland, and they're only eight or nine years old, and they have no English whatsoever. So they're coming into a country where they don't know anything and nothing is familiar to them. So I decided to learn Russian so I'd be able to communicate with them. So if they have any problems, they could just come to me and I could converse with them. Brilliant. Um, that's an amazing. Uh, I've been to Chernobyl, and it's phenomenal. And you're right, a lot of young people are coming into our country every every year visiting and they just need to feel a little bit safe and, and, and home-like. So learning Russian helps them immensely. Um, Killarney No Name Club has helped you immensely too. Um, and we did want to give a big shout out to Brogan, correct? Brogan, yes. Um, Brogan is the former host of the year. And I think he did us all very proud this year. Mm -hmm. So we're all very proud of him. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a good chap, our Brogan, isn't he, Brogan? Um, moving back to yourself, surf to head to heal excuse me surf to heal this is where the future teacher comes out in her um the one thing i was told to get right tell us a little bit about surf to heal 
Um, so Surf to Heal is an Irish uh, voluntary organisation and it runs all over the country. Uh, so it's a surf speak right into the sweetheart, sorry. <laughs> it's a surf camp for children with autism. And the best thing about the camp is that the children don't actually realise that it's a surf camp specifically for our children with autism. It's just a surf camp where they go and have a bit of fun during the summer. So um, my brother Padraig, who's here tonight, got me involved and he got all my siblings involved. So every year we go to Banabin Beach in Kerry and uh, we teach uh, young ch children with autism how to surf. And it just really builds their confidence and uh, they have a great time, so it's brilliant. And was learning surf easy for you? No, um, I p made a mockery of myself trying to get up, get up on the board. Um, yeah, there's quite a few funny, funny pictures of that now. <laughs> I don't worry, I won't need to the screens for us to showcase. Um, but working with Surf to Heal, was that what gave you, and No Name Club, was that what gave you um, a grow for, do you, you know, going, you wanted to do primary school teaching in Mary I, correct? Yes. Is that what led you to that decision? Uh, definitely, I love working with young people and uh, that's what's great about No Name, it's given me the chance uh, in my own club, uh, they gave me the chance to actually raise funds for Surf to Heal. Uh, so I put the motion forward in my club in front of all my peers and I had to explain to them what it was and thankfully they let me uh, raise funds for it. So um, we presented the cheque then to um, the, the leader of Surf to Heal then. Amazing. Um, much like many of our young people in the room tonight, you're not just amazing at one or two things. You're also a phenomenal Irish step dancer and a footballer. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I've traveled uh, all around the country with uh, Irish dancing in the flat hole and score. And uh, last year I had the privilege to um, represent my own uh, club in Glen Flesk, um, in the world in Glasgow. Now, we were chatting a little bit earlier because you are the quintessential Irish Colleen. Red hair, slight tan, not very strong, but not very pale either. She asked me to say that one. Um, but for, the da for worlds, you kind of have to transform yourself quite differently. Uh, yes, for worlds, um, you have to look a certain way. You have to have uh, fake tan and the sock glue to keep up the socks. And uh, I was in a, a group, so um, all the girls had brown and black hair, so I had to look exactly, we all had to look exactly alike. So um, I got a wig, you know, the big ones with the curly hair. And, um, the ones I that move yeah. in one piece. <laughs> and uh, they actually had to dye my hair black, uh, so it was, they had to spray the top of my hair. So um, they made uh, the red hair girl all black, so it did look a bit strange already, right? yeah. And do you agree with the transformation that one must do? Um, I don't really agree with it because it's not really giving the right image because for Irish dancing, I think that it should focus more on the skills than appearance. So I think maybe in the future, if they move more towards the skills aspect, then the image would be more important. Now, uh, before I ask you just to step away to get ready for your party piece, um, I do want to reminisce about this time last year. Your, your technical dance skills were in full flight. Share with us, oh Mary, what happened. Um, so uh, last year, as all my club members know. And I'm going to ask you to lift the mic because I want everybody to hear this. This is a health and safety warning to all those involved. Uh, so for everyone here tonight, uh, when you think you can uh, do a certain dance in front of everyone and maybe think twice, um, so we had a dance competition here last year and it was a face off boys versus girls and Lord of the Dance came on and I thought yes I can Lord this and uh, I thought wrong. So anyway Brogan comes up and he's doing his best and I'm like oh come on I, I can show him up and I uh, did a high kick in the air and unfortunately fell down very very awkwardly and tore all my hamstrings and my foot went out like a balloon. Uh, so my friend Fina was uh, there alongside to not notice anything. And she was otherwise <laughs> preoccupied. She was preoccupied with other matters. And uh, thankfully, uh, my friend, <laughs> my, friend uh, my friend Sonia and one of the leaders came to my aid. And uh, thanks to Sam, who actually let me borrow her crutches uh, for the weekend. And uh, they all got me home safe, thankfully. <laughs> So mind yourself later on if you plan on doing a mic to flatly. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary's gonna jump off um, to get dressed. She's gonna be performing a, and a beautiful Irish dance to finish the night before dinner comes out. Huge round of applause representing Killarney, Mary O'Sullivan. <laughs> now, 
it is not easy being the man in waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, representing Thinglist, please welcome Jonathan Dunn. I've been looking forward to chatting to you all night. Oh, thank you. I've been looking forward to chatting to you. Oh, thanks, as he turns can himself away. Can I say one thing? Okay. Everyone's looking amazing, I have to say. And not only that, give it to oh. Maria Walsh, who is looking absolutely amazing. It's an honor to stand on stage beside her. <laughs> I think I should be gone, not you. What a charmer. What know, an absolute charmer. You. Have to be, you, you know. Weren't, you weren't showcasing this earlier on when you made fun of me, but we won't share with the audience. We'll be, we'll be kind. Tell me about yourself. You have a big year, much like Mary. Yeah, so my name is Jonathan Dawn. Uh, I'm currently in sixth year. Uh, after school, I want to do science education. And science education is a science and maths teacher. I love everything got to do with sport. Uh, my little sister is my world. She's my garden angel. I love her. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, um, Johnson's family couldn't be here because they had family obligations. Um, but we do have a good shout out for Finglis. Where are you, Finglis? You may be small, What's up, but, lads? You, are, you may be small but you are chill. mighty. But tell us, because I didn't want to interrupt you, but I did want to uh, uh, make it known that you were loved tonight. Indeed, I know family are, are keeping posted at home. Um, so science and education is a key goal. You're a huge maths nerd. Am I allowed to say nerd? No, no. No, no that's not no. cool. It's just like, I always like maths. It's always been my favorite subject. Uh, in second year, my English teacher was talking about like, what future jobs to be doing. And he said, do a job you love. So I love going to school. So I said, you know what, I love maths. I must as well go and study maths and, yeah. and become Smart a teacher. Um, tell me this, so No Name Club, what is your story? You've been involved for three years. Yeah. Have you changed oh, over yeah. three years? Yeah, hugely. I would never have seen myself on this stage talking to all these people. Like, it built my it, confidence. It, I mean, it, it suits you. Like, look at all this. You're a man at the moment. Oh, I know. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and like... The respect you get off all the people as well, like, that is, like, living for, like, yeah, but I uh, got so much confidence in myself, like, I grew up a lot, mm -hmm. uh, I learned the positive attitude towards drink and drugs and what they can do to you, mm -hmm. and, like, I'm honoured to even be on this yeah. stage, representing me club for the known name Well, we are delighted to have you here. Oh, thanks. Now, million. word on the street is... To grow in confidence, you performed a song by Tay Tay Swift. Oh, yeah, uh, Taylor Swift is the girl of my dreams. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I sung Love Story by Taylor Swift, and it's my wedding song. Well, hopefully, if the girl lets me. I guess you know who you are, is all I'm going to She knows who she is? Uh, no. Okay, so if we see him singing Tay Tay later on, we'll know. Um, and how did the super talent go? Really well. Well, I cannot sing whatsoever, like, and the respect of it all, people. Thanks a million. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, really, I was petrified. Yeah. Outside of the super talent, you guys in Finglas have a big birthday coming up. Oh yeah, that's very true. We have our 25th anniversary coming up. And yeah, John, my leader over there, has been repairing on ourselves. Uh, we've been going back over the years, trying to get people, inviting them and all to it. So yeah, working hard for that. And we it's on the 22nd of May, correct? Yeah. Uh, John and uh, this man here, Mr. Don, uh, has invited us all to celebrate the 25th anniversary. Yeah. I can see Finglas sweating if a thousand people show up in Finglas to celebrate. But happy birthday from all of us in the Lyrath Hotel tonight. Finglas, working hard. But come here, No Name Club keep you busy. Yeah, very busy. You're also on the National uh, Council. Yeah, I'm uh, in the National Council. 
at the moment, yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. It's 20 members. Yeah, it's 20 members, and we're basically coming up with new ideas of what the host and hostess was like to see. And I think for next year, for the conference, we're coming up with the idea of uh, doing mental health, because I think mental health is a big issue, especially in our generation. And yeah, we're trying to ta tackle that. So everybody keep an eye out, um, National Youth Conference, focus on mental health, which I think is a much needed. Oh yeah, and one more thing, for the National Youth Awards, they're gonna try to get like a separate room for people to chill out. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah because I, I think wellness is a part of many different things. We all, we all have different personalities and mental strengths, and it's important to recognize that. I like that idea. Um, now, you're a big sports fanatic. Oh yeah, I love sport. I love keeping fit and well-being and looking after my health. Uh, do you want me to go on? No, nope. later on he might show us some sit-ups. Yeah, if you want. Are we daring him to do some sit-ups, ladies and gentlemen? Why not? Oh, the jacket comes off. Oh, no problem. No problem, I have nothing. I'll, I'll hold the jacket. So we'll give a count of 30. Is that manageable? Turn to the side, we need to see that you have a flat stomach. Go on. One. Two, you haven't done it yet. And on three, oh, there we go. Two, a bit faster there, Jono. Shame, only four. And he calls himself a sports fanatic. You get down and do it. Unfortunately, I'm so dignified, I can't be doing that. Um, you have a big fan of Brett, I want to make sure I, Brett Cap. Yeah, he's a, a gym instructor on YouTube, and I strongly advise anyone to go and search him up. He will honestly be so motivated when you're looking to reach your goals in sport mm -hmm. and keep him fit. Now, I want to, that wasn't his party piece. I mean, a party piece can't be four sit-ups, right, ladies and gentlemen? No. Oh, um, yes. You are going to say a poem for us. Yeah. The and it's called, I took the time to say hello. Yeah, this poem is about, uh, just for example, if I didn't know Maria and, I, and she said hello to me, it would make my day. And I think it's a big like, factor, especially in our generation, like what a simple hello can do to people and how can it change to our mood. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Dunn representing Finglas giving a poem, it's I'll hold the jacket, Jonathan. I took the time to say hello to someone that I didn't know, to someone who was walking by, a look of sadness in her eyes. And when she smiled back bravely and said a warm hello to me, I realized my little gift had given us both a lift. You'll never know just who you meet throughout your day on any street. People just like me and you with loneliness and problems too, yet Life always seems better when we take the time to be a friend to someone we didn't know, and all it takes is one hello. And carrying on from that, I love to say a huge thank you to the No Name Club for giving me this opportunity tonight to be on this stage. Like, honestly, it's an honor, and I'm so thankful. And to any hosts, and hostess out there considering about doing this next year, go for it, don't hold back, because if you don't go for it, you will never know, and you don't want to live with that, just go for it. Thank you very, very much, sir. I appreciate that. What an absolute legend our Jonathan Dunn, representing Finglas. Now, coming back on stage, an amazing woman, all the way from Killarney, 
taken to the stage for her party piece. We, please welcome back Mary O'Sullivan. to the Lyrath Hotel because I had delayed the process, taking me time chatting to our wonderful eight finalists. Um, but now it's food time. Enjoy. We'll be back on stage in a very short bit. But can we give a huge round of applause to our eight finalists? Aoife McLaughlin representing Kilbride, Rory Fallon representing Mount Bellew, Rachel O'Malley representing Lewisburg, Owen Bohan representing Garvin, Georgina Lahi representing Kilkenny, Camille by Dyke, way, representing South Sligo. Killarney is being well represented by Mary O'Sullivan. And Figless, Jonathan Dunn. Well done, you guys. We'll see you back here in just a bit, naming 2017 host and hostess of the year. Enjoy.
Back up on stage, our MC for this evening, Maria Walsh. Good evening. Is all young people back at their seats? I see a few people floating around. Collectively, will we do a big countdown of five and hopefully everybody will come back to their seats because we have a little bit of news to announce. Something about the 2017 host and hostess of the year. I don't know if anybody wants to hear. And Mayo's plight to win the All-Ireland. Going five, four, three, two, one. Happy birthday, Carol! You're all 60. Okay, coming on to the proceedings. I know there's a few floating in, but we won't delay. I'm forever asking for rounds of applause, but we need to give it socks now, ladies and gentlemen, and young folk, because for the last time, we will call on to the stage our eight finalists. Representing Kilbride, Warm, warm round of applause. Please welcome to the stage, Aoife McLaughlin. <laughs> Representing Mount Bellew, please welcome Rory Fallon back to the stage. Coming all the way from Lewisburg, County Mayo, please welcome Rachel O'Malley back to the stage. Probably one of the biggest clubs tonight, and indeed for entire no name, coming from Dungarvan, Mr. Owen Bohan. Just down the road, hosting us this evening, coming from Kilkenny, please welcome Georgina Lahi. And Mr. Camille. By Dyke, hope I pronounced that correctly, coming from South Sligo. We'll forever remember her dance moves. Please welcome Killarney's own Mary O'Sullivan. And the absolute charmer of the night. Please welcome Jonathan Dunn from Figless. Nah, we're not done giving them one more round of applause. I think they deserve it, right? Let's hear you, clubs. Now, I would like to uh, bring a little bit of formality to the evening, and I will ask you, uh, please, 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 this is my last time I'll ever ask, just be respectful as we're going through one or two more speeches, and then we will get to the announcements. Um, I'd like to welcome to the stage the chairperson of the judging panel, Mr. Mick Brown. You guys are good. Good 
Good evening, everybody. I, I won't keep you too long. I am well aware of the excitement here in the room, but as chairperson of the judging panel, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my fellow judges, Rebecca and Edel, and I think they deserve a big round of applause. I would also like to compliment Marie for a wonderful job tonight and putting the finalists at ease. Not an easy task, but as always, Marie, a true profession made it look easy. Tonight is a night of celebration. All the finalists sitting here have gone through stringent preliminary rounds of selection. Regardless of their talents and interests, these eight young people have something in common. They are role models for our young younger generation, and above all, they are the young leaders of tomorrow. Earlier today, we had a wonderful occasion of meeting with each of these eight young people here behind me at their private interviews, and really got a chance to get to know them. Tonight, you just saw a glimpse of who they are. Each of them should be delighted with what they have achieved. They are excellent young people, full of confidence, and have great aspirations of what they want to achieve in life. You are great ambassadors for your clubs and your parents. Club leaders and fellow hosts and hostesses should be so proud of you. I have been judging these awards for over 10 years now, and picking a winner doesn't get any easier. Though I must say, it is, as always, a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the remarkable achievements of our youth. Our job, our job today has been a difficult one, as the calibre yet again is so high, but because of the nature of the competition, we have chosen two wonderful people to be this year's host and hostess of the year. So, so finally, no matter who is announced winner here tonight, I wish, wish each of you all the best wherever life takes you. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. Calling back after um, an unforgettable year. Uh, who they did, I said earlier tonight, they did uh, the organization themselves, the clubs, just so proud. So please welcome back the 2016 host and hostess of the year to the stage, Mr. Brogan Edmonds from Killarney and Miss Amy Fleming from New Ross. Now both Brogan and Amy are gonna present each of our eight finalists with uh, a memento of their uh, journey to date. Their last official job as 2016 host and hostess of the year, ensuring that all eight finalists for the 2017 uh, celebration is well looked after, so thank you very much. Um, before I open up uh, the envelopes, they always give me the great jobs, don't they? I'm very grateful. Um, I want to say thank you very much to the events committee for having me back. Um, I equally like to say uh, nights like tonight don't happen uh, just because a couple of young people and adults want to show up at the Lyrath. Um, months and months, perhaps even a year of hard work goes into tonight. Um, and the events committee do a phenomenal job uh, on behalf of No Name Club. So can we just give them a lovely warm round of applause for hosting us this evening. So thank you very, very much. Tonight, um, 
probably unofficial numbers, but it looks from here over a thousand people are sitting in the Lyra um, in Kilkenny. And it's not easy feast maneuvering around. I don't even know how many tables. Uh, the food was great, the service was exceptional. Um, so I think the staff here at the Lyra deserve a number uh, of round of applause throughout this evening because they did such a great job. Now, one housekeeping, um, just because it's, it's amazing to have all no-name clubbers and young people under one roof. Uh, please mark your diaries. The 27th of May is Super Talent Finals in the Lime Tree in Limerick. Will you be there? Will you be there? Thank you. Um, OK. You ready? Hostess or host? Which would we like to hear first? OK. Given my Rosa Chile background, I will start with the host and it will be uh, Shivers. May we get a bit of a drum roll, please? <laughs> Representing the No Name Club on a national level for the 2017 year, please give a huge round of applause for They're celebrating 25 years this year. It's Jonathan Dunn from Finglas. Can I, can I just add note, uh, and I will come to hostess, I promise. Um, Jonathan uh, joined No Name Club three years ago. Um, I've heard many stories about him over the last couple of uh, 48 hours. Uh, three years ago, he was extremely quiet, wouldn't even open his mouth. Um, there's no better man that I have met. Uh, indeed, all our host finalists this evening are exceptional, but he's we all agree he speaks from the heart about No Name, and I think he's going to do this year a phenomenally jo great, amazing job. I'm so delighted for you. Now, I think we're done now. Will we go home? Drum roll, please, for Hostess of the Year, representing No Name Club for the 2017th year. Joining the Finglas man, we have, we're in trouble, ladies and gentlemen. She destroyed some ligaments last year. Uh, let's hope she keeps her feet on the ground. Mary O'Sullivan representing Killarney.
your host and hostess, Jonathan and the lovely lady from Kerry. Congratulations. What a great year we have ahead of us. Thank you very much. Paul Kavanagh, the extraordinary DJ, is going to kick off in just a few. He'll be here to the wee hours in the morning. We're going to be stealing our uh, host and hostesses and our fellow finalists to take some photos, and they'll be back to celebrate you right soon. Uh, have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very, very much.